Welcome back everyone. Today I think we've actually got some of the best news WoW has had in a long, long time. The deal is Blizzard are removing the timer from a lot of what would have been Mythic Plus dungeon content, but if you enjoy M Plus as it is now, don't worry, you're safe. In fact, it may even be getting better for you. Now, it'll be coming out next week, but we've got a video we've been doing about the success of Mythic Plus. The raw numbers are super impressive. So, if those are strong, but we're seeing really positive changes being made here, well, then that actually bodes very well for the future of the game. We may indeed look back at this moment in a few years' time and essentially see it as the start of something that's brilliant. And also in today's video, I'll cover the rest of the news as well. Boot.dev forward slash Bellular. They are going to teach you backend web development, an amazing skill, and in this case, they'll be doing it with Python and Go and doing it the smart way by making it fun. You see, they're an online self-paced platform, 100% designed to get you writing code, not just any code. You'll be working through role-playing game inspired problems and boot.dev itself has got quests, levels, XP, achievements, and you can get 25% off your first purchase with my link and code. They've an incredible and very complete learning path and where they can, they will be working through things via the stuff that we like. Roleplay is woven through their courses, like say, developing and deploying a Pokedex, learning object-oriented programming by working through RPG combat examples. It's an approach to learning that is leveraging the sorts of things that we already find to be interesting to help make those concepts click. And what's around the learning matters too, be it their Discord community or their open communication approach where they have, say, the boot.dev beat they publish every month that keeps you in the loop with new content, new features, and the comings and goings of the platform. Indeed, as of this month, as of February, they've had users complete 609,179 lessons. Pretty neat. So you can check them out today at boot.dev forward slash Bellular, where code Bellular gets you 25% off your first purchase. And that's backed by no questions asked, 30 day money back guarantee. And they've got free demos for all their courses for you to check out first. So cheers, Boot, and let's roll. First though, okay the dungeon changes. To set the tone, here's the reaction of one of the guys in our team. Quote, I imagine people like X, which is one of our guildies, will really enjoy playing the game again. That was his initial reaction. And the reason why is that person doesn't like timers, but does like traditional WoW gameplay. So let's dive into it. What's core here is that if you do love Mythic Plus, nothing bad is happening to you. You could even say that this is an upgrade because I think the scene will be a lot healthier. To talk about the changes, big picture, Blizzard are making heroic and mythic dungeons harder. They're making Mythic Plus be something that kicks in significantly later in the gearing curve. And within Mythic Plus, affixes also kick in significantly later. So essentially, if you like harder dungeons, but you don't like the timer and the affixes, this is meant for you. And if you're somebody who's been blasting through 18s and beyond, this actually doesn't impact you negatively whatsoever. Straight up, this is a win-win. So let's go into the detail. I'm going to spell out what's happening to each mode, and then we'll zoom out to take a look at the overall system. Normal dungeons will remain the same. Heroic dungeons are going to be harder though. They will be about the same difficulty as today's Mythic Zero dungeons, but without any of the Mythic only mechanics. As the heroics, they'll still be queuable, and of course, rewards will be increased significantly in line with them being that higher difficulty. So a heroic will be as hard as a Mythic Zero and will get gear as good as what you would have been getting in a Mythic Zero. Mythic dungeons are also getting that treatment though. A Mythic Dungeon in Season 4 will have about the same tuning as a Mythic Plus 10 Dungeon would right now, but it'll have no affixes, it'll have no timer, and you'll be able to swap around your talents within the dungeon. So basically, you get a non-face roll dungeon that doesn't have timers or any of that stuff. Basically, if you're somebody who really enjoys, say, doing a Mega Dungeon in the patch that it releases, this new version of Mythic will be for you, and the rewards from it will be in line with what you'd expect from a Mythic Plus 10 today. And of course, it does have a weekly lockout and it's not queuable. Also, do remember that Heroic Dungeons and Time Walking Dungeons contribute to the Great Vault as of patch 10.2, which I think makes all of these changes far more relevant. What about Mythic Plus then? Well, it still exists. Here's how things will work. 
a Mythic Plus 5 in the new system will be about as hard as a Mythic Plus 15 is now. A Mythic Plus 10 in Season 4 would be about as hard as a Mythic Plus 20 right now. So essentially, beyond Mythic Plus 10, there is no change to the core experience, but affixes will be kicking in a little differently. Tyrannical and Fortified begin at plus 2. The other sets of affixes kick in at plus 5 and plus 10, which of course, in today's speak, would be plus 15 and plus 20. Yeah, the final batch of affixes come in at the equivalent of Mythic Plus 20. That is so much fewer affixes. Okay. That might seem like a lot to take in. Credit to the Blizzard team, though. They have this visual explainer of the new system that uh, is really good. It just makes it so damn clear. The blue dots denote where affixes kick in, and I think this just illustrates their big design goal very, very clearly. The space that today is eaten up by Mythic Plus 2 and Plus 10 wasn't really being put to good use. We actually have a lot of the numbers for Mythic Plus run data, and barely anything happens in the Plus 2 to Plus 10 range in the current day. So, by making Heroic and Mythic Zero dungeons a bit harder, they They've essentially made non-timer, non-affix dungeons with a meaningful level of difficulty a far larger part of World of Warcraft. So if you do like dungeons, but you don't like timers, you have just got a humongous upgrade on what you can do on your characters and how far you can gear them. And if you would like to say, blast out a few heroics on an alt, which is handy because it's queuable, well, today that would be almost pointless in terms of gear. With the new system, it would actually be decently rewarding. I mean, to get gear of like roughly the equivalent level today, you'd be trying to find like mythic plus twos or plus threes. Whereas in the new system, like, yeah, you, you, you'll just be able to queue. That's a lot handier. So with that said, let's talk about loot progression and that kind of thing. Okay, rewards. I'm going to use numbers that are normalized to a season three level here, just because season three item levels are kind of what's already in our head. With the current system, a heroic dungeon drops item level 428 gear, and it will upgrade your Great Vault to 441. If the new system were implemented today in it, a heroic dungeon would drop 437 gear, with 450 veteran gear being in your Great Vault. Let's do the same thing for Mythics. In the current day, Mythics drop 437 gear with 450 from the vault. In the new system, you'd be getting 454 champion gear, that is basically normal raid gear, from the dungeon, and 467 hero track gear from the Great Vault. So essentially, where the old system of normal, heroic, and mythic zero progression was essentially non-existent for the vast majority of players, in season four, that stuff will actually matter. Now, as for the Mythic Plus item levels, those are really what you would expect. Just that Mythic Plus 2 to Plus 10's range today, that is covered by Heroic and Mythic Dungeons in the future, and then Mythic Plus difficulty in the future will cover the space from 10 and onwards in today's system. I think this is vastly superior. Let's talk about rewards then. So, a regular old mythic dungeon in this new system will give you 10 drake crests. Of course, there's no way to fail one of those dungeons by, like, uh, you know, like, depleting the timer, so it's just a flat 10 for completion. Mythic plus 2 through 10 will drop worm and then later aspect crests, pretty much just like how they drop in those higher keystone levels today. Flightstone rewards will also match your level of challenge, so a Mythic plus 2 in the new system would yield as many Flightstones as a Mythic plus 12 does today. Okay, pros and cons. Here are the pros. People will be able to play harder content with better rewards before they run into a timer or affixes. Another pro is that the difficulty curve between normal, heroic, and mythic zero dungeons will actually be meaningful, and that progression will go far enough that many people will be able to get the dungeon experience that they really want from World of Warcraft without seeing a timer. This also, though, means that people will be able to learn the core dungeons at a more meaningful level of challenge without timers or affixes, and that means that if they do decide to step into Mythic Plus, well, they'll have actually learned the core dungeon mechanics at a difficulty level where they matter, which is tremendous. Progress between Keystone levels, once they do kick in, will feel more meaningful because of how the affixes are distributed now, and like for like, affixes are way less impactful in the new system. 
Let's revisit that chart. As you can see, the final set of affixes activates at the new Mythic Plus 10, which is the equivalent of today's Mythic Plus 20. So where in the old system, you would have three affixes be active, in the new one, you'd only have two affixes. And certainly when I've been polling people that I know and uh, polling you guys over on Twitter, most people have either said, reduce the impact of affixes or remove them. So this is clearly in that direction. It's a furthering of the reduction to affixes impact that they started with patch 10.1. Let's talk about the cons then. Really, I, I think there's only one. It's change. Change can be confusing. It can spook people. It can lead to misinformation spreading. I've seen a bunch of tweets from people, um, you know, so far today that completely misunderstand how this actually works. And uh, yeah, just, just completely don't get it. Really here, when you actually read all the details and take them in, for an existing Mythic Plus player, you guys are seeing no downsides, right? You can push your rating and do all of that as much as you would want. For everybody else, there is just more meaningful dungeon content. You can carry your characters further. And I just think that's going to be really positive. And that means that overall, I do not think that there are any meaningful downsides to this system. Now, yeah, I'm totally open. There could be something that's counterintuitive that I've, you know, overlooked, whatever. But basically, I think this is fantastic. And at least going about the people that I know, I've literally not heard somebody think that this is a bad move for the health of the game. So yeah, good vibes. Now, they are testing this with season four, which is a pretty good sign. That means that if there are any weird problems, well, those will be worked out in time for the war within. Okay, let's continue on with the news then. So where are the pirates? Where's 10.2.6? Uh, the community did get a bit stir crazy there for a while. Um, of course, we went from Dragonflight's torrent of constant PTRs to really just like, we knew there would be a patch, but you know, there, there was no news, right? Well, you're not going to have to wait for long. Number one, Blizzard have said there will be a development update tomorrow, and they've scheduled some extended maintenance for critical server infrastructure, which they say is improvements to their network file system. But given the mysterious nature of 10.2.6, I honestly wouldn't be surprised if we even got a global release shadow drop of this, like on maybe Thursday, 14th of March. Because if you think about, say, uh, Season of Discovery, it has actually had global releases. I think it'll be fairly interesting. And uh, I've heard interesting things from one or two birdies. I don't even know if this will be taking place in the main WoW client. Yeah, who knows? That could be a load of bullshit. Overall, I'm pretty excited. That being said, there was one bit of more negative news. The Hearthstone event started and uh, yeah, it's been a mess. So the rollout was strange. They didn't explain much about it until after it was out and when it did come out, it was full of bugs. The supposedly hourly ominous portals from which Whizbang appears and summons a few iconic Hearthstone minions, those were completely bugged. They were spawning in every five minutes in some shards, which meant that some people could spam the group finder to complete the whole event within a few hours. Then when the NA servers did come up, well, many of them just just didn't have portal spawns at all. Now, this has been fixed. The portals are now spawning hourly as they're supposed to, but there have been some other bugs. Game tables phasing, uh, you know, in and out. The login reward of the steed was not being given to people initially. The Hearthstone toy was actually broken for most of launch day. And in game, it feels a bit rushed. There isn't really much of a breadcrumb quest other than what you get in the mail. So maybe people can miss this kind of easily. Also, there's only one game table, but loads of players don't know that their Hearthstone table toy actually does function for the event. And then the mini game itself is quite bare bones, which I think would be fine, but the user experience is overall confusing, which I think means it's, uh, yeah, not really shining. Uh, then most of the rewards are tied to the hourly spawning boss. So uh, yeah, just get farming. That's, that's what's up. A lot of people have also called out the fact that there is a full Hearthstone Tavern asset within the World of Warcraft game files. And it's a bit odd that, you know, of all things, it's not being used for this. Overall, um, look, I personally don't mind that much because I don't really care about Hearthstone and I know this is just some cross promo. That being said, this is an event in a game that you pay a subscription for and that does mean that content like this should come out bug free and with very clear engaging gameplay. So overall, yep, probably a missed opportunity, definitely a shame. I'm not going to put it down to malice or anything like that. I have to assume that this just did not get enough development testing and polishing time. 
uh, which is usually the case whenever things go wrong in games. Next then, going to finish us off with some quick fire news. Number one, Cataclysm Classic Beta is live, but it's been live with a mysterious up textures option. It doesn't do anything, but uh, yeah, I've got to wonder. Also, Warcraft Rumble, which uh, itself is a pretty good little sort of distillation of an RTS, I suppose. Um, it's apparently PC bound, so that's kind of interesting. Blizzard have also uncapped crest rewards. You can now farm as many crests as you want, which basically doesn't make that much sense at all because the cap of crests was already absolutely humongous. And it's not like this is even useful for your alts because, well, you, you know, you can't really trade crests between characters. Just a lot of people think that this really changes nothing and it just called to attention that loads of people want to be able to trade their crests. Anyway, something also is spooky with the trading post. This, I don't want to get buried in the otherwise pretty positive news. I do think it's kind of important. So to cut a long story short, the old data, right, suggested that the really nice peafowl mount would be the monthly reward for completing your log. But in pretty much a last minute hotfix, that was swapped to be the pet that we're now getting. Now, I believe that that is a very clear reduction in value for players. And I think that is something that is somewhat of a trend for monthly rewards. It feels cheap to me. Everyone can use a mount. A mount looks really cool. But a pet? I mean, it just feels like a free bonus that you don't really want. And I get it. Some people really like pet battles. But overall, I mean, something of broad appeal that was high value has essentially been swapped for something that is, you know, a recolor of an old pet. I don't know. I think it's, uh, I think it's a clear loss. And uh, I, I just, yeah, I think they're getting more skimpy with those things. Also... There's the Datamind Dreadlord inspired sets that are now up as a store bundle and uh, also a completion reward from the trading post's first month that, uh, you know, color changing mount, it is actually now a store mount. So I think pretty clearly what's going on here is uh, the trading post monthly rewards will be fair game and looking at how they've been running well over the last few months, I think the intent is clear. There will be monthly cosmetic bundles or, you know, purchasing opportunities, whatever that will have significant trading post crossover. Either some things that were old big rewards from the trading post. I mean, just think about the bonus reward that we got around BlizzCon of, uh, you know, all the different like swords that had the pretty cool lore interactions in Silithus. I wouldn't be surprised if when War Within comes out, that ends up being some sort of like, uh, you know, bundle purchase, maybe for like 15, 20 bucks on the store. So I think that will be going on. And uh, yeah, basically expect some stuff for purchase every single month. Now, overall, I, look, I don't love this. I will note that compared to most games, this isn't as bad. In most cases, this is stuff that you either will have been able to earn in game or with tender. So that is, uh, you know, this is not that it's amazing. It's just, it is better than the norm, but I do think Blizzard, okay, if you guys are going to be doing those, uh, you know, those monthly bundles or monthly purchases, I think it's only right that you then give us more than a thousand tender a month, you know? If you're taking a little bit more in the monetization, I think you got to balance out those scales a little bit so that your players, well, have some sugar to make the medicine go down, I suppose. Anyway, that's the core news. Right now, we're basically just poised for whenever this pirate-related 10.2.6 actually happens. And of course, when that happens, the public test realm for season four will become active. And when that happens, well, we're going to see what season four will actually mean. Obviously, there's a whole bunch of dungeon changes that we've talked about today, but there could still be some stuff for raids. I'm especially thinking about, say, the Dinar system they put in for season four of Shadowlands. How will they be taking something like that and implementing it today? Overall, pretty interesting stuff. I think this is essentially, though, when we're going to enter the fast lane. There's going to be this pirate patch. There will be season four. Pretty shortly after that, we'll get 10.2.7 on the public test realm. That's Darkheart. In and around that time, the War Within's alpha testing will begin. And really, then we're just in the fast lane to the expansion actually coming out. And that really seems like a fast lane that won't be ending given the uh, pretty damn insane schedule that they've got and seemingly will be able to hold to. Again, don't pre-order based on that, but uh, hey, at least it's not the era of patch 9.1. Yeah, things really have changed in just the space 
a few years, which I'm pretty thankful for. As for us, I know that the most recent like few months have not been the most uh, crazy for our upload schedule. There's a few reasons for that. Um, just one or two cases of um, having slightly reduced capacity. Um, nothing bad, by the way, just, you know, IRL and stuff like that, and actually some really good things. Um, but right now, I think we've kind of got more Warcraft content in simultaneous production than ever, which is really nice. And um, yeah, we've just kind of changed up a bit of how we do things and my own personal goal is to have way more content in this channel that is about actually playing the game and doing things in the game rather than you know commentary punditry shot calling the the sort of news related stuff but of course the news will continue to flow anyway that is it for me and of course a big thanks to boot dev i mean hey they're warcraft guys they do a really good job with what they do and uh yeah, I think they're just they're one of our strongest partnerships. It's great to have them. So you can check them out down below. That's it for me, and I'll see you next time.